This is Ham College, Episode 17, for May 31st, 2016. This episode of Ham College is brought to you by ICOM. Pioneer your path. Any time is a good time for a new ICOM base station. And by hamstudy.org, a great place to study for your amateur license exam. Good evening and welcome to another episode of Ham College. I'm Professor Thomas. I'm Dean Martin. <laughs> you know, that just never gets old, does it? <laughs> Not for us, apparently. Well, we'll have to watch the chat room and see if it has for anybody else, though. Yeah. We're back for another show and fresh from Dayton. Yeah, I don't know about so fresh. Yeah, but from Dayton. Yeah, we're from Dayton. That, it, uh, it ended last weekend, but I hadn't been home for the whole time so. it seems like it just ended a day or two ago yeah it yeah. does but uh, boy a great time there this year we shot two amateur logic episodes at the icon booth yeah that was a lot of fun those That's some great guests mm -hmm. those are still in editing right now i'm almost finished with uh the first one so uh, yeah. yeah and i guess we can release it a little soon we don't really have to Oh, that'd be good. Wait a whole month, do we? Yeah, so uh, there's a little teaser for you. Yep, so we'll be getting that out. Some great stuff on there. I particularly liked the age range, the age spread that we had yeah, there. Yeah, we pretty much covered the, the whole gamut of it, didn't we? Yep, yep, from 12 to 94. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, it's uh, really interesting. We met so many people in Dayton who had just gotten licensed. We did. And accredited a lot to ham college and amateur logic and the other video podcast and uh, you know we can't take all credit for it we just kind of give them a little show oh and, yeah we, yeah if uh we, we, I, we actually saw the first uh person wearing the ham college colors too we time. did so that we did uh, that was a graduate got, yeah, yeah she had just gotten her ticket so congratulations yep. to her i wish i would have thought to get her call sign and stuff but Anyway, I'm sure she's probably watching and know who she is. But it just seems like in the last few weeks we've heard from a lot of people that just recently got licensed and two or three that went all the way from no license to extra and just yeah. just like that. Yeah, that's quite an undertaking. That is an undertaking, but um, hey, they did it. So yeah. congratulations. Congratulations to those who, uh, you know, just passed your technician exam too. You're amateurs. Yeah, and uh, get, there's a lot of fun to be had on a technician. Tommy and I did that for a long time. Long time. Yep. And uh, actually, actually, we've covered a lot of things that you can do just with the just with the basic te technician Ex ticket yep. on this show, and we'll cover some more tonight. Yeah. So anytime we're shooting a live episode, we always have a chat room going, and if you want to join us. Come over to amateurlogic.tv slash chat. I guess we ought to talk about whatever it was we talked about last month. Well, I do remember we talked about some digital modes. We did. We talked about uh, PSK31, uh, CW, and APRS. Which ones are we going to talk about tonight, Tommy? Uh, voice over IP, uh, some of the telephony stuff, uh, voice over IP, mm -hmm. uh, echo link, yeah, yeah. and um, IRLP. No, and you put together, uh, we'll just come clean here at the start. We don't have an IRLP node here no, in I, Jackson. No, I've never used it. No, I've never used it either. We've used echo link a lot. We've used D-Star a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, some system fusion in the area now. I, we, I haven't used it. I don't think there's any DMR yet. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Yep. But uh, IRLP, I don't know, it's just not here. And for some reason, that's about the only thing that the uh, question pool has as yeah. far as uh, voice over IP. So it'll be interesting to see how we fare on yeah. this one. And I just don't understand why there's no echo link questions in there. 
Or if there is, we haven't uncovered them yet. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen any. Yeah. But it's it's a very similar technology. Very very similar. So. Yeah. A little bit of difference there. Yeah. You put together a little video for us, though, of Echolink, since we know a little bit of something about it. Yeah, we've used it a time or two. Echolink's a great system. It's very flexible. As you can see from the diagram here, you can use the Echolink software to connect from computer to computer. You can have a radio, and you can actually run a node that other Echolink users can connect to and go out over the air in your area. So, for instance, when I was in Missouri, uh, we set up one at George's place, and then I set one in Missouri, and I could ride around town and talk to people at home uh, with no problem. So it would trunk through, go from the mobile into the radio via the interface, and through the computer over the internet, and, and make the reverse trip back out the antenna at George's place. And so we could hold a conversation over the air just like we were in the same town. It's a very nice piece of software. As you can see up here on the right corner, we've got an iPhone and an Android application. So you can go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and download those applications for free. Use your, your iPhone or your, your handheld phone as almost as a handy talkie. We're talking about interfaces to go between the radio and the computer. There, there's quite a few of them available. You can get something like the Rig Blaster you can get something like the uh, Signalink USB, which is very popular, or you can do the route that George and I did and build your own. To get on Echolink, you're going to have to get authenticated. So you're going to need to go through the validation procedure to get onto the Echolink network. This is going to keep unlicensed hams from getting out over the air. Not only can you, as I said before, not only can you go from computer to computer, you can go from computer to radio or radio through the internet or radio to the computer through the internet and back out in another location. So you want to be very careful about who has access to that. So when you bring up the software you can see different links, repeaters. These are all the ones all over the world. You can have favorites set up which you can see I have a few. I use the uh, do drop in to go on the uh, Ham Nation net, the W5PPB-R is uh, in the area where, where I live, and this is the system that is running actually from George's location. Uh, you can find conference servers and lots of different things. You can also sort them by location, South America, Africa, North America. Let's go to the do drop in. And there's the Do Drop In conference server. So you can see by the screen here that we are connected to the Do Drop In com conference server. A conference server is a server out there that runs a special piece of software that a lot of repeaters or a lot of links or echo link nodes can connect to and all communicate together. It's sort of like a big hub. To disconnect, we click the link up here at the top. If you go to AmateurLogic.tv, episode 28, you'll see a review of Echolink for the iPhone. Yeah, so Echolink's a great technology. I, I use it a lot. You know, I use it from uh, Dallas where I work mm -hmm. uh, for the After Show Net for uh, Ham Nation and stuff mm -hmm. sometimes. And I have the app on my iPhone um, and on my iPad mm -hmm. and on my Android phone. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's pretty handy to have. Yeah, I've got it on my. Um, I'm not even sure what you call that thing now. That little computer oh, that little box terminal I've got. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not really Windows kind of a look. I don't even remember what they they call those, but yeah, it's just a little small uh, Windows XP box. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what you're running the wires, host on, right? W I S C. Yeah, that's what we run the Echo Link Node on here. Uh, there's some. D Star repeaters around town too. But we used Echo Link back before really there were um, straight digital setups like that available to us. Yeah. When you moved to Missouri. Yeah, it was yeah, it was handy, man, because uh I mentioned a little bit in the video, but you know, we brought that extra radio over here and hooked it up on your antenna mm -hmm. and then 
I built the interface, you, mm -hmm. just like the one you built. Yeah. And I, up there, and I hooked it up to a radio. Actually, it was run on a handy talkie mm -hmm. and an old computer out of my garage and uh, put an antenna up. And I used it for a, a, basically a permanent link between Mississippi and Missouri. Yeah. We just connected them up and left them connected. And, uh, you know, anytime you got on the air on the Simplex channel we were using, yeah, uh, you were coming out down here in Mississippi. And yeah, it, it was just, cool. It's, uh, it uh, kind of alleviated some of the potential homesick type yeah, stuff, you know. Because it was like you were, you know, just like you were here. Yeah. As far as on the air. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, and you can do that now with... Uh, digital modes as well you can do it mm -hmm. with d star and you've got and we i don't have uh, the rf link i've got i've got the makings for one but i haven't put it together yet yeah you're gonna have to get on that yeah but you've got a couple don't you yeah i've got a d a dv mega mm -hmm. and a dvap mm -hmm. and uh anyway those are nice so you can set up your own hot spot there and mm -hmm. here and, and do similar yeah and you you mentioned something in that video there it is, I guess, important to get verification or authorization before you allow someone to jo uh, join one of those networks. Yeah, you mentioned you the term my, unlicensed hams. Yeah, you caught my, sl caught my little slip, of, <laughs> slip there. Yeah, well, an unlicensed ham is the one you have at Easter. Or Thanksgiving. Or Thanksgiving. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> well. It's a tasty ham. Yep. And so those technologies are all uh, VOIP, mm -hmm. Voice Over Internet Protocol. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you can get VOIP phone lines now in your house. Mm -hmm. I've got, you know, my Comcast uh, cable modem up there. I've got telephone jacks on. I've got a tele. Well, you just got that too. Didn't yeah, I just got it at my house. I haven't got it hooked up to the phone system throughout the house yet. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll do that this weekend if I have time. Um, well, we were kind of doing that on uh, ham radio for for many years, really before that technology really got established there. Yeah. You know, people were using uh, chat clients. Uh, we used to use Windows Messenger for, yeah. for um, you know, for chatting. And, yeah, we uh, use Skype a little bit. Use Skype. So, you know, it's all uh, very similar technology. It's just these have been adapted to ham radio. Yeah, and it, it really... For the technician class license, well, for anybody really, but especially technician that can't get on HF yet, or, or not a lot of HF, mm -hmm. then it, again, like I said before, it basically opens up the whole world because you saw that list of, of nodes and repeaters that are on Echo yep. Link, Echo Link. They're literally all over the world, and, and at the touch of a button, you can connect to almost anywhere. Well, in the chat room right now, I just saw Dan mention an area He's just been on for the last two weeks, and he's made contacts to the U.K., Germany, Israel, uh, all from his uh, local repeater. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's uh, it's very simple to do. And Don, WB3BJU, asked, is there an amateur logic episode where we built the interfaces? And actually, yeah. there is. I'm it's not sure. It's one of the way old ones. Yeah. I don't know if we actually showed the interface, but I know we showed the schematic of it and uh, talked about how to do it. I, th I think if you do a search for introduction to echo link maybe that's what I called it but go yeah. to the wiki yeah it should it should uh, be listed in there yeah wiki.amateurlogic.tv and uh, but, you, you know maybe that uh, something so, sometimes those old things it. yeah, yeah maybe it'd be something good and it's just a handful of parts it's really easy to put together yeah that's basically what we're going to be covering in the question pool this month but we've got a few electronics questions too that oh, we're yeah. going to go over and before we really get on into that let's just take a, a quick break here get a message from our sponsor come back give away something and then just dive right on in all right pioneer your path anytime is a good time for a new icom base station be one of the first to experience how icom is changing the way receivers are designed with ICOM's new IC7300, it will exceed expectations. 
It has RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, a large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. With ICOM's IC7851, when running with the big dogs, you'll be the leader of the pack with all the pileup braking frequency running tools at your fingertips. 1.2 kHz optimum roofing filters, new local oscillator design with improved phase noise, several spectrum scope enhancements, and more. Other worthy candidates that cannot be overlooked, ICOM's IC7600 and IC7700. These radios feature LED backlighting on an ultra-wide 5.8-inch display, advanced DSP technology and three roofing filters, spectrum waterfall display on an impressive 7-inch color LCD, audio scope function for AF observation, and direct remote control operation with ICOM's RSBA1 software. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM's base station radios. We always give away something. Yeah? Well, it's not yeah. a big secret now. I've got it laying I, over here on the table. I don't guess it ever was really that big a secret because no. <laughs> we do it every yeah. month. Yep, yeah, it's time to win some cool ICOM swag, a nice ball cap, and a ham crew icom official t-shirt and i saw some of those walking around dayton this yeah, year i did i did too so if you'd like to win that what you do is just send us an email to ham college at amateurlogic.tv you don't really have to be a ham to to be registered just send us uh, your name and your email address and we're just doing a random drawing and i've got the winner here for this month it's going to be Jim Dossey, KM4SUI from Ocala, Florida. And he says, I just got my tech class license back in March. I learned a lot from watching Amateur Logic and Ham College. Thanks for the shows. Awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jim. Uh, we'll be letting ICOM know about it, and they'll be fixing you right up. Well, Let's just dive on into the questions. Who's going to take the first one tonight, Tommy? Uh, I'll go for the first one. All right. Well, let's see what we got then. What does the abbreviation PSK mean? A, pulse shift keying. B, phase shift keying. C, packet short keying. Or D, phase slide keying. So what do you think, Tommy? Okay, I've never heard of a term a slide keying, so I'm going to scratch that one off the list right off the bat. Okay. Packet short keying, that does, I'd have never heard of that one either. No. Phase shift keying, I think, I believe that's going to be the answer. Hey, pulse shift keying, pulse shift. I think it's going to be phase shift key and B. So B, that's yeah, what... Yeah, and I don't know how to reason it out. I just think that's the answer. That's just what it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, actually, you're right. Okay. Everybody in the chat room was saying B, so I knew you were on to something yeah, there. I must have been on to something. All right. Knuckle bump. Okay, next one it's here. one down. One down. And about, I don't know. A lot to at go. At least 15 to go. What is PSK31? A, a high rate data transmission mode. B, a method of reducing noise interference to FM signals. C, a method of compressing digital television signals. Or D, a low rate data transmission mode. And this is mine to answer, so let's go through them. A high rate data transmission mode. Well. No. PSK31, we're running on an HF, and I know that none of the modes there really have a high data rate because they would take a lot of bandwidth to do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I know it's not A there. B, a method of reducing noise reduction to FM signals? No. PSK31 is a data mode. Nothing really to do with noise reduction. C, a method of compressing digital television signals? Nope. It's not that. So, Tommy, I'm going to say it's got to be D, a low-rate data transmission mode. Yeah, I think you're right on that. And it looks like um, that's what everyone's like saying. Chat room also. Yeah. So, let's see. And it is D, a low-rate right, data earned, transmission. You it. Yep, I did. I worked hard for that one. 
Next one here, what is meant by voice over internet protocol, VOIP, as used in amateur radio? A, a set of rules specifying how to identify your station when linked over the internet to another station. B, a set of guidelines for working DX during contests using internet access. C, a technique for measuring the modulation quality of a transmitter using remote site monitored via the internet. Or D, a method of delivering voice communications over the internet using digital techniques. Okay, this one's quite wordy. What is meant by voice over internet protocol as used in amateur radio? Okay, I set think... Of rules, it's not, I don't think... It's not a set of rules, so I, it's not a, a set of guidelines. That's not... It's not going to be guidelines either. No. A technique for measuring the modulation quality of a transmitter. Voice over it. No, that doesn't really make sense. So it's going to be D. A method of delivering voice communications over the internet using digital techniques. And that's the only one that really makes sense. I think most people would get this one whether yeah. they were hams or not. Because yeah. that's a, a pretty common term these days. Yeah. And you're correct. All right. Nailed it. You nailed it. All right, let's go on to the next one then. How might you obtain a list of active nodes that use vo VoIP or Voice over IP? A, from the FCC rulebook. B, from your local emergency coordinator. C, from a repeater directory. Or D, from the local repeater frequency coordinator. Oh, I, I know this one. Yeah, it's too bad it's not yours to answer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I was typing these in, I, I really wasn't looking at it that close, and it just kind of shocked me when I saw from the repeater directory. I had never thought about them listing that information in yeah, the repeater directory. Yeah, I remember directory. seeing that in there. That's how I, that's how I know the answer. Well, let's. But uh, although, actually, let's. Yeah. yeah go for it. I'm yeah. Not let's let's you thunder. Let's let's reason it out then. Okay. All right. To get a list of active nodes, no, the FCC rulebook is not going to have that. Um, B, from your local emergency coordinator, he wouldn't have that. Uh, if D, he did, he'd go look somewhere else and get it for you. Yeah, D, from the local repeater frequency coordinator, he's just coordinating frequencies, and I don't think people running voice over IP are reporting it to him. RC from a repeater directory, and that's your best choice guess there out of all yeah. of those. Um, you know, a repeater directory is just a little book you can get, and there's also some on the internet now where you can just go look up mm -hmm. different frequencies in different areas, and they'll have the call sign, uh, the location of the repeater, whether or not it's got a tone encoded squelch on it, and apparently also whether or not there's mm -hmm. a voice over IP connection yeah. on it. So let's see if I was right. Everybody in the chat room said I was. And it is C. All right. Congratulations. And yes, that was a question from Ham Nation last night. I mentioned it on there that we'd be having it tonight. Oh, yeah. So I kind of let it out of the bag that I knew the answer already. Yeah. But, um, let's move on. So to you the don't next. get credit for that one. I'll take credit. <laughs> anyway. What is the name given to an amateur radio station that is used to connect other amateur stations to the Internet? It's A, a gateway. B, a repeater. C, a digipeter. Or D, a beacon. Well, what do you think? What is the name given to an amateur station that is used to connect other amateur stations to the Internet? A or D, a beacon is not it. It's not a beacon. Now, a beacon just sits there and just rebroadcasts a message mm -hmm. over and over. It's and, not even two-way. Yeah, and the C, a digipeter, basically just repeats the digital packets that it gets. A repeater could, well, it, the answer is going to be A, a gateway, because that's going to be the gateway from, from mm -hmm. the air to the Internet. But it could actually be connected uh, to a repeater, but the answer yep. is A, a gateway. Yep. Yeah, it is a trick question. I, I noticed they were uh, saying that over in the chat room. Mike said that. Uh, yeah, it is because a, a repeater could have a gateway on it. Right. And mm -hmm. ours 
Ours, Ours does. does. Yeah. So I'll agree with you. It's a uh, gateway. All right. Nailed it. Okay. Next one. What is the Internet Radio Linking Project, or IRLP? A, a technique to connect amateur radio systems, such as repeaters, via the Internet using voice over Internet protocol. B, a system for providing access to websites via amateur radio. C, a system for informing amateurs in real time of the frequency of active DX stations. RD, a technique for measuring signal strength of an amateur transmitter via the internet. And this one's mine to answer. What is the Internet Radio Linking Project? And we talked about IRLP a little earlier. Mm -hmm. So I, I think everyone's going to get this. And our lack of it. And our, yeah, uh, yeah our lack of experience with it. Yeah. But... Um, D, a technique for measuring signal strength of an amateur transmitter via the Internet. No, that's, that's not what it is. A, a technique to connect amateur radio systems such as repeaters via the Internet using voice over Internet protocol. And I think we all know that's going to be the answer, but let's just go to B, a system for providing access to websites via amateur radio. Uh, negative. Negative. A C, a system for informing amateurs in real time of the frequency of active DX stations. No, uh, there is something that does that, but it's mm -hmm. what's called a DX, DX cluster. cluster. Yep. So it's A, and that's, that's what everybody's saying over on the chat room. That must be your final answer. Yep, a technique to connect amateur radio systems such as repeaters via the Internet using voice over Internet protocol. That is the answer. And there you have it. And that's... That's what I said. Yep. All right, let's move on to the next one here. How is access to an IRLP node accomplished? A, by obtaining a password which is sent via voice to the node. B, by using DTMF signals. C, by entering the proper internet password. Or D, by using CTCSS tone codes. And this one's gonna be mine. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a tricky one, too. I, it, it is a tricky one, but I'll be honest, when I was looking up uh, information to do the project... You accidentally the video, saw the I found, answer. I, I stumbled across it when I was doing <laughs> some reading about it. But let's go through, through them anyway, so okay. I'll come clean on that one. Um, by using CTC, it says tone codes, that's, that's not going to be it. By entering the proper internet password... Uh, well, that sounds like that's a good thing to do. That's not going to be the answer to this question. By using DTMF signals, that that's going to be the answer. And A, obtain a password. There's password again for A. So the answer is going to be B, by using DTMF signals. And that means that you're basically entering an access code mm -hmm. on the keypad of your radio if you have one or a DTMF stored in the memory. Well, that's what everybody's saying in the chat room there. So. Well, there. There's a lot of smart people in that chat room. There you go, by using a DTMF signal. Uh, by the way, uh, CTCSS, Continuous Tone Co Coded squelch. squelch. That's right. Okay. Uh, the A, answer A there, that one kind of got me, Tommy. By obtaining a password which is, which is sent via voice to the node. That would be kind of stupid, wouldn't it? To yeah. just broadcast the, right out the password. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you new to the ham world or an existing amateur operator who wants to take your license to the next level? Study for your radio license exam at hamstudy.org. Hamstudy.org is a free online learning tool powered by ICOM. It was created by Richard Bateman, KD7BBC, Michael Stuffelbeam, KV9G, and Rich Porter, KK6GKE, and it uses a modern web design to enhance the experience of studying for your technician, general, and amateur extra exams. Since 2013, hamstudy.org has helped new and existing hams to familiarize themselves with the question pools, use stats-based flashcards to focus on material they need to learn, and take practice exams to gauge progress. Visit hamstudy.org on your desktop computer or mobile device. Register for a free account at hamstudy.org.
to access personalized study history and other site features. Prepare for an exam in an intuitive and comprehensive manner. Check out hamstudy.org powered by ICOM for free learning tools. Good luck on your next exam. And now, intermission. Refreshment time. Watching Super Flick and eating all this great food. This flick is making me hungry. It makes me want to flick my bick. We should have gone to the drive in where we could eat and flick to our heart's content. Well, what are we waiting for? Well, come on then. I'm going to have a pizza and popcorn and ice cream. And I'm going to have a burger with fries and a soft drink. Yum, yum, <laughs> yum. That does not make me want to have pizza. No, I, I wasn't even sure that was pizza it until was, I read yeah. <laughs> what it was there. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, those things are pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, you're going to go to the drive-in and flick your bick? going to flick my bick and hope I don't set my drizzle guard on fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, oh, man. <laughs> th I've got a bunch of those uh, those right there VE3 MIC Mike found oh, and, yeah. uh, sent to me and then I've got a bunch of others I've been collecting for over 10 years now and just kind of mix them up and try to have some different ones yeah. every week well, they're, they're good it's, it's neat to see those old things boy it is I, I, I kind of enjoy seeing them yeah, that's, uh, I, I miss, I was thinking about it when I was driving home from the airport a while ago. Do you remember where that town and country drive-in that used to be over across the where reservoir? Yeah, it's remember. over there across the reservoir. If you go turn right, like you go into Lakeland Drive, it was on the left where the little super stop stores are. Okay. I it was know. right behind there. I never, so. I don't, I, I never went to it but once. Really? You know, yeah, because I didn't live down here when it was open, oh. I don't think. But, uh. Anyway, well, get your drill card and go back. <laughs> you know, I, I can't say anything about that. I'd probably better leave that one alone, huh? How do you select a specific IRLP node when using a portable transceiver? A. Choose a specific CTCSS tone. B. Choose a correct DSC tone. C. Access the repeater auto patch. RD, use the keypad to transmit the IRLP node ID. Well, mm, I think we this, just answered that one. Yeah, this is a very similar question, isn't it? Yeah. I think I know the answer to it. I know that it's not going to be choosing a specific CTCSS tone. It's not going to be choosing the correct DSC tone. Uh, I don't need to access an auto patch to get on IRLP and address a specific node. By the way, an auto patch, and I don't know if there's many around anymore, but you know, us hams had telephones in our cars way before cell phones. Yeah, back before it was cool. Back before it was normal. It was cool. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, but everybody was hearing your conversations. And there may still be some auto patches out there. It's basically a telephone line tied to a box, tied to a repeater so that you can make telephone calls from your car using your your DTMF. But that's not the answer to this one. It's D, use the keypad to transmit the IRLP node ID. And that's what everyone's saying in the chat room. Yeah, there's a bunch of smart folks over there, isn't there? Yeah. See, they were questioning my judgment on that earlier. They were smart enough to watch him college. There you go. D. 
use the keypad to transmit the IRLP node ID. Same thing for Echolink. If you're on a repeater that's got Echolink on there, you're going to have a, uh, a code that you can just enter in a node number and do with the DTMF keys, and that's how the repeater, or actually the, the computer that's acting as a node for it, knows mm. who to route the traffic to. Right. I always remember the uh, do drop in three five five eight hundred. Yep, said it so many times that it just yeah. it'd be hard to forget. It's a, it's a good one too. If you get on the Tri Echo Link, uh, get on the do drop in and check it out. There's a good bunch of folks on there. What if, if even when the nets aren't going, there's a lot of people hang out mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, and that's a that's a conference. That's not actually calling another repeater. You're linking in mm -hmm. to a another computer that has a lot of different people linked to it and there are some repeaters that could be linked in with that as well mm -hmm. uh, what if you were on D-Star where would you want to go to find a group to hang out with uh, I hang out on 30 Charlie on reflector 30 Charlie or uh, so they're called reflectors on there yeah same same principle as mm -hmm. uh, as a conference server I don't know what they're called on uh, DRM or if there is such a thing there chat rooms Chat room. I think uh, talk group. Talk groups, maybe. Talk group, I think. Somebody will answer that in just DMR, a minute you, here. D DMR, though, not DRM. Yeah. Digital DRM is management. Digital Radio Mondial. That's the uh, broadcast. So, digital, digital rights management, too. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I don't know on System Fusion what if there is such a thing there and, and what they call it. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I think this. I think there's a similar concept, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm waiting for somebody to bail me out in the chat room over here and tell me on DMR. Talk groups. Talk groups. D Star Reflectors Fusion is rooms. Okay. Okay. So that's how that works. There you go. IRLP is. We don't know that either. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. We don't. We don't use IRLP. We don't have it around here, so I've yeah. just never done anything yeah. with it. More questions than answers this time around. What is the typical bandwidth of analog fast scan TV transmissions on the 70 centimeter band? A, more than 10 megahertz. B, about 6 megahertz. C, about 3 megahertz. Or D, about 1 megahertz. Hmm. Typical bandwidth of an analog fast scan TV transmission. Fast scan. Mm -hmm. That means like real live action, just like the kind mm -hmm. you get here on. Yeah, on so I'm assuming that's going to take a fair amount of bandwidth for that. I would. I, would think. I, I think you're. I think you're thinking is right. Okay, so that, I'm going to scratch out D. I think that would be a wise. And I'm going to scratch out C too, because three megahertz doesn't seem. Uh, I'm, I'm just guessing here on this one. Okay. So more than 10 megahertz is a lot. I think somebody would raise cane about that. These too little. A seems too much. It's got to be B or C. And I'm thinking it's going to be... Chat room said B. I'm going with the chat room. <laughs> B. <laughs> you weren't supposed to look at the chat room just yet, but okay. I'll go with you too, and it is B, about 6 megahertz, and I, I knew the answer to that because I used to work in television, and standard TV channel is, is six megahertz wide. About 6 megahertz wide, and we use more or less the same uh, format NTSC, that old analog television, is essentially the same format we're using for fast scan. Okay. On, uh, on UHF. 10 megahertz, more than 10 megahertz seems like uh, a bit of a bandwidth hog. It seems like you might get some complaints about that. I, I suspect you sure. would. Six is a lot. Uh, yeah. But um, UHF, you know, we got a little, little room spread out there. So right. That yeah, works out okay. Interesting. Yep. All right, next one. What type of transmission is indicated by the term NTSC? A, a normal transmission mode and st static circuit. 
B, a special mode for Earth satellite uplink. An analog, or I'm sorry, C, an analog fast scan color TV signal. Or D, a frame compression scheme for television signals. Well, I know the answer to this one, and kind of for the same reason I knew the answer to the last one. But let's just go over it. What uh, type of transmission is indicated by the term NTSC? And NTSC stands for National Television Subcommittee or Standards Committee. I'm not sure which okay. it is. It doesn't stand for Normal Transmission Static Circuit? Nope, it doesn't. I don't even know what that would be. So we know it's not that. Uh, B, a special mode for Earth satellite uplink. You know, I don't know if they ever used NTSC for satellite uplink, but it wouldn't have been a special mode. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's analog television. Um, C, an analog fast scan color TV signal. There's your answer right there, and that's what everyone's saying in the chat room. And D, a frame compression scheme for television signals. No, it's not that. It's the plain old analog television. National Television System Committee per, ah. ch per chip. Per chip. And he, you know, he's usually right on things like this. Yep. So let's move on to the next one here. Let's. How many amperes are flowing in a circuit when the applied voltage, and I tell you what, before we do this, let's, Let's take a moment and uh, look at some handy formulas that we're going to need to answer this one. Okay. And you don't have your iPhone handy, so good thing you got that iPad there. Because we're going to have to do some ciphering here. Do I need an iPad? <laughs> Ohm's Law. And you probably can't see this right here, but it says I equals E divided by R. Or, another way to say that, I equals E over R. I is current equals the voltage divided by the resistance. And we can use a chart like this so that we can transpose this formula around and, and make it easy to solve if you know any two of these. If you know the voltage and the current, just divide the voltage by the current and you got resistance. If you know the current and you know the resistance, just multiply them and you got the voltage. Okay. So Ohm's law, I equals E over R. Just draw that out when you sit down to take your test. Draw this on your scrap paper there and you can refer to it when you're trying to solve some of these different equations here. There's another one that we're going to want too. It's uh, very similar. This is a power formula, and it is power equals current times voltage, or P equals I times E. Works the same way. How do you think it works, Tommy? Same way. All right, explain. Do you got some explaining to do? <laughs> uh, what if I want? What if I know the the current and the voltage? If you know the current and the voltage, then you can multiply them and get the power. Multiply the current and the voltage, and that'll give me the power. All right, what if I know the power and the current? Well, then you divide the current, divide the power with the current. And you get, get the voltage. The voltage. Mm -hmm. And conversely, if you know the voltage and the power. You do it backwards. Yep. And you got Power it. divided by mm -hmm. voltage equal current. So write that one down too when you start. Just remember P equals I times E. Draw this out and then you know all the variations of that formula. There you go. And you know, on little simple formulas like that, this method is it works good. For some reason my instructor in college didn't want us to do this. Really? Yeah, he didn't he didn't want us to do this kind of stuff. And I don't know why he wanted us to learn the formulas. But if you just know, like in the Ohm's Law, I equals Z over R, draw it out like that, and you got all the variations of it. You can do more complex formulas this way, but they get a little more confusing as to, you know, drawing the charts out. Mm -hmm. but, but they can be done, too. Mm -hmm. 
And and yeah, there's a there's another power formula too, but we we're not going to get into that tonight. It might be on one of the future um, set of questions here, but not necessarily the ones we're talking about tonight. So let's go back and how many amperes are flowing in a circuit with the applied voltage? Uh, well, when the applied voltage is 12 volts DC and the load is 120 watts. Well, how are you going to figure that out, Tommy? Well, I think I'm going to take the <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the 120 watts and I'm going to divide it by the 12 volts which is going to give me B 10 amperes. 10 amperes. Well, sounds like a reasonable assumption to me and now if my gazentas are correct. If your gazentas are right, and I, I think they are. Everyone in the chat room says they are. All right. Bam. You got it. I don't know, you teacher, you teacher uh he was wrong about not using those charts. He was for me, anyway. <laughs> okay, next one. This is almost a little bit unfair. What formula is used to calculate voltage in a circuit? A, voltage E equals current I multiplied by resistance, R. Uh, B, voltage E equals current I divided by resistance, R. Or C, voltage E equals current I added to resistance R. Or D, voltage E equals current I minus resistance. Man, that's really awful to, to just to read that out. Just to it? read it is real four, confusing. Four of them it? in a row. All right. Well, the first thing I'll, way I'll solve this is I know none of those have a minus or a plus in them. They're all either <laughs> multiplication or division. So I can rule out answers C and D there. Stretch those out, yep. And then I can refer to the chart that I drew before I started. And let's see how it plays out. If we try uh, A there, voltage multiplied by resistance voltage equals the current multiplied by resistance. Oh, I didn't read that right, did I? Voltage equals the current multiplied by the resistance. That's it right that's there. That's true. It's going to be A because, well, because that's what it says here on my cheat sheet. Yep. Let's, let's just look at B. Voltage equals current divided by resistance. No. It's current times resistance, so it's got to be A there. Yeah. Yeah, there's no gazentas in that one. Nope. Nope, it's all times. <laughs> okay. That's my old Beverly Hillbillies episodes coming back. You remember those? I thought the gazentas was um, from Je Three Stooges. Uh, Jethro did his gazentas. Did he? I know he did some powerful ciphering. He did. Yeah. <laughs> what do you expect for a double knot spy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one here. What is the voltage across a 2 ohm resistor if a current of 0.5 amperes flows through it? A, 1 volt. B, 0.25 volts or 1 quarter volt. Yeah, C, 2.5 volts. Or D, 1.5 volts. Do you need some scrap paper? No. Nope. So I'm going to take the 2 ohms and I'm going to divide it, the current divided by the amperes. And that's going to give me 1 volt. Well, so you're going to say it's an A. Yeah, and there's some gazettes in that one for sure. I think it's A. It, did I, or did I get my formula mixed up? Well, no, you got the right it? formula. I did? Yep. You well, said it was... Well, half of two ohms is is one volt, so... It's got to be it then, doesn't it? Uh, you said voltage divided by current. With my so. Alabama education, it, yeah. Sixth grade? Sixth grade education. <laughs> <laughs> 
There you go. One vote. There we go. I feel like answering another one. There you go for yeah. it. What is the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor if a current of one ampere flows through it? A, one volt. B, 10 volts. C, 11 volts. Or D, nine volts. 10 ohms. Yep. And a current of one ampere. 10 ohms times one amp. So that'd be 10 times one, so it's going to be 10 volts. So that's saying that it's going to be number B. Number B. <laughs> <laughs> that's what everyone else is saying, so okay. there we go. It must be right. B, 10 volts. Now I got one for you. What is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if the current of two amperes flows through it? A, 8 volts. Oh, B, 0. 0.2 volts. <laughs> C, 12 volts. D, 20 volts. Okay, you need voltage, to use this. Voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if two amps flow through it. 10 ohms. Right 10 there. ohms. Yep. Yeah, somewhere. 10 ohms and 2 amps. That would be times, so 20 volts. 20 volts. Uh, I think you're right, and everybody else does, so you are. You totally redeemed yourself. I did. And you know? Did I graduate? I think you graduated. You graduated. Yeah. <laughs> and also, that's... Um, that's all the questions we got for tonight. No way. Yeah. We're just kind of getting started. We got them pretty quick, didn't we? So what do you say we we take a break for about uh, 60 seconds, so okay. roughly, and come back and visit in the chat room Okay, a that bit. sounds like a plan. On the 15th of each month, ICOM is proud to sponsor AmateurLogic.tv with hosts George Thomas, Tommy Martin, and Peter Barrett. This looks a little crude, but... Roughly, here's what I have. The bottom trace here is ground. While the elements will jiggle some, they're actually not too bad. It's light. After putting it together, I decided to test everything, so I ran in 12 volts, and I'm measuring the output here. No, it's not too windy right now, Jim. It was yesterday. Actually turn that into a scanner capable of tuning across a wide range of frequencies. Whoa, okay. What is this called? We're in the antenna switching matrix. Any one of our six broadcast transmitters could be connected to any of the 22 antennas via the switching matrix. Down in Melbourne, apparently, they, they tune up their radios <laughs> different than we do, Tommy. Oh, yeah? Now, the FM 900 is tough. Seriously tough. <coughs> we finally arrived. Man, we're in Ham Nirvana. Again. Boy, what, what a great time. And... And as happened last year, we still haven't got all the way through the flea market yet. No, we've been hit about a fourth of it, but we're going to have to strike a trot. Well, the moment of truth has arrived. I've attached a BNC connector to the antenna terminals here. I've got plus 12 volt in ground uh, power coming in here. It's going to my uh, power supply. Uh, that I'm supplying it with 13.8 volts. And I personally am so thrilled that... George got the special award. Well deserved, my friend. That's really cool. Yeah, what about the Super Bowl, Emil? Did you go to the Super Bowl, or were you at home uh, operating that night? Tuning my amplifier, and oh, I lost power in the shack, and uh, went outside. The house lost power. <laughs> the whole neighborhood went out for about 30 minutes. I, I don't know what happened. Oh, huh. That explains a lot. All right, Tommy, sing the theme song here. You know, that was, that was some good moments from uh, Amateur Logic. We need to go oh, back yeah. and pick some more because there's been a lot more good ones since oh, yeah. that was put together. Yeah, that's together. been made quite a while, hasn't it? Several yeah. years. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about over in the chat room tonight? A if bunch of things. there's a height difference, I'm assuming they're talking about when we were all standing there. Oh, in the, one of the pictures? Yeah. Yeah. There is a pretty good bit of height difference. Ralph is, uh, 
AB10P is talking about that new Heil PR77. Yeah, that's a nice looking mic. It is. It's um, it looks looks pretty sort big. of like that old RCA ribbon mic, like one of them. Like mm -hmm. a, yeah. And uh, good job on that. It sounds pretty good too. I've uh, heard him use it. And, oh yeah. Yeah. Had a good sound. Too. Actually, he had it on uh, Ham Nation the other night, didn't he? He did. He had it on last night. That's mm -hmm. when that was shot. But we got to see it up close at uh, at Ham Benchin in the Hall booth. There, it was. Mm -hmm. It's a nice looking piece. Yeah. I read something today, and I probably shouldn't mention it, but uh, I believe, I, and I, I didn't research it very far, but I think I saw a headline somewhere that they are uh, announced they'll be releasing Android for the Raspberry Pi. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me there was going to be a Raspberry Pi 4. No, I think Peter already covered that. Yeah. 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 But did you hear that? Uh, no, but it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I think I think maybe it was Google made the announcement. Yeah, I think that'll be cool. Yeah, it, it would be cool. The uh, you know, you sure it's not already out? I have to I check don't know. on. I have to check on that. That that sounds interesting. I'd like to just uh, play around with that song. Yeah, I've never played with an Android device, so um, you know, so I, I guess they would. Maybe a bit a little easier to do than some of the stuff we do with the Raspberry Pi, where we have to recompile everything. You think? Uh, pro probably. I suspect yeah. you can probably download things right off of the Google Play Store. Yep. Oh, when are we going to start covering the general exam questions? That is a good question. We hadn't finished the technician exam questions no. yet. Um, we probably got I'm about gonna say three more months. Four months? Probably getting close. Yeah, we're, we're, we're whittling it on down. Then we'll be going into the uh, general. And, um, yeah, it won't, won't be terribly I guess there's enough long. interest for us to continue on and do the general. Been having a lot of people ask for that and the extra, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got probably a little studying to do before we try to Can start explaining the extra. Yeah. Can you imagine how long it would take to get through that extra pool? At 15 questions per month? I don't remember how many questions were on it. Uh, there were a lot. Yeah. John K2BAG says he's already studying for his. And I guess he means general. He could mean extra. I don't know, Don. I'll probably be an extra by the time you get to general. Well, that would be great. Now don't, don't let us hold you back. Uh, those of you who are planning on taking the technician exam, go ahead and do some outside study and go yeah. for it. Don't and they are. Well, and we've, they are. We've got emails, lots, lots of emails about that. Lots and lots of people. You know, when we started this program, we didn't know, you know, how how well it was going to go over. We thought there was probably a need for it, but uh, yeah, it's oh. it's been worth it because we've heard from so many people that had wanted to be hams and just needed that extra little shove to yeah. To get started studying. Well, I guess we're living proof. If we can do it, there Anybody you go. Yeah. Rest speaks for itself. You know, you were, we were talking over the weekend about uh, should you renew your ARRL membership? Are you going to put me on the spot? I'm right going to put here you on the spot, everybody, cause, aren't you? Because I coughed up the dough, man, and yeah, I got I, I got the latest QST today. Yeah. And there's some good stuff in there. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I just haven't. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not over there, and I, when I'm home, I don't think about it. No, I need to do it. Yeah. Well, I kind of put it It's off, a good organization. You know? the, I, I mean, I, I know it is. They, they're they pretty much the main ones that fight for for our, you know, keeping spectrum and, and basically our rights to put up antennas. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't agree wholeheartedly with everything. That, no, well, I don't agree know, wholeheartedly with anything but, anybody, every, yeah. you know, people do. But, but we do need somebody representing you know, yeah. amateur radio. And they got some good books, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the mag the magazines are great. The magazines alone are worth the price of the, the membership. Yeah. Wasn't it a, a fun time in Dayton this year? Got to meet up with Mike again. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. got some fine Canadian swag. I don't have it back here. We, we'll show the Moose Crossing sign, maybe. Yeah, the next maybe amateur line. Yeah. But I did eat those maple cookies, and y'all will see when we did you? post the date and episode, oh, you you'll the see box? all this. 
I ate the whole box, man. Well, I hadn't drank all my Tim Hortons yet, but I'm, uh, I haven't drank any of it, so I'm going to try yeah. it tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I've heard people saying that it's good stuff. Yeah, it's good. But the maple cookies, man, I'm going to have to put them right up there with Tim Tams. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. They they were better than I was expecting. Arnie, Arnie says the Swedes have the best coffee, but I haven't found any. Yeah. You know, I thought... Uh, Mountain Grown Coffee from Columbia was the best. That's what they Juan. said when I was young. Oh, Juan Valdez. Juan? Yeah. Who told? Is that who told you Juan? I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, John K two B A G says, "Beware of Canadians offering gifts." <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate y'all all being with us tonight. It was fun as always, and we'll be looking for that next Diameter Logic coming out very soon. Yeah, it should be very very soon. Yep. And then, we're in the meantime, we're going to be kind of preparing for field day. We're getting together our plans now. We'll be talking about field day. Yeah, I'm looking uh, forward to that. It's going to be yeah, fun. It is going to be fun. 73, uh, everybody. See you next time. 73. voltage and the current just divide the voltage by the current and you got resistance if you know the current and the voltage and you want to find the resistance just divide the voltage by the current what is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if the current of two amperes flows through it a 8 volts C 12 volts. Why'd you skip? Oh, B, <laughs> 0.2 volts.